Okay guys, we're gonna try something different on this video. I'm gonna show you the new toy in the shed, the helicopter, why we have it for our search and rescue. I'll even tell you one of the stories about the time we found a guy frozen solid, absolutely scared us to death. And uh, a little bit about the chopper, what we're gonna use it for. I hope you like this, it's a little different. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay guys, so this is a little different. You know, I'm usually building scrappy wild aircraft, Draco. Today I'm not doing much building. Uh, I'm probably throwing a couple of uh, new um, watt lights on this this time. But I wanna give you a quick tour of the helicopter, what I've been doing. Normally I'm building a plane. The last couple of weeks, I took some time off just to get refreshed on flying the Bell 206. I've got most of my time in 44s and 66 uh, helicopters. I've been flying for 15 years. Matter of fact, we'll go back. I found an old picture the other day of uh, my original first helicopter. My son was like this big next to me. And uh, it's fun, he's now, taller than me. But I've been flying helicopters forever. We got this new Bell 206 and I had to take a break from building my airplanes so that I could get really tightened up on my auto rotations. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about auto rotations and then a little bit about what I use the helicopter for. So auto rotations is just practicing for those of you who don't fly helicopters is drop and collective which disconnects the blades from the engine and you take the helicopter down as if you have a complete engine failure. The auto rotations I wanted to get fresh on is what's called a fold down auto, which means we never re-engage the engine to the blades and we take it all the way down to full touchdown. So I'll show a couple of those clips here, but what's really fun about it is we can literally, even at this high elevation we live at, 4,500 foot airport, we're able to drop collective, disengage the prop, and let the, the rotor spool up as we descend. And we're trading the engine energy in the descent to rotate the blades. And as we approach the ground, we start pitching the blades, pulling collective, pitching the blades to arrest that descent. Now, we're now trading rotational energy we collected on the way down to lifting force by pitching the blades but that rotational energy is dissipating really fast. At this elevation, we have about three seconds to stop the fall, arrest it, lower the nose, and set it down. And so that's what I wanted to practice. That's what I've been doing. What's really fun, and I missed some of the funnest ones. We did uh, basic run-on landings where instead of coming to a full stop, we slide them on. But I really wanted to focus the full down to a full stop. We also did some reverse auto rotations where we actually simulate the engine out and then trying to land on a spot behind us. So we drop it and then we have to fly backwards, grab our spot with no engine and then fly back forward, regain our airspeed so we can arrest, spool the blades up in the flare and set it down. It's really awesome. You can land a helicopter with no engine at all, perfectly safe. I don't know how many we did. Unbelievable, over and over and over couple weeks of flying. I feel like I'm ready to do what we bought this helicopter for, and that's go out and safely do search and rescue. My brother Mark and I have been on the search and rescue team for over 15 years. We've done call outs all over the place, and uh, quite frankly, it's, it's one of the most rewarding things we're able to do to give back. We don't have been donating our helicopters the time, the expense to do it all this time. If you have an opportunity to give back to your community, go do it, whether it's cleaning a park or whatever it is, just give back. It, it's rewarding to yourself, it's been rewarding to us and it helps other people. So um, I wanna tell you a little story about one of these call outs. Story time is here, let's gather round. Come on everybody, gather round. Uh, I did in a helicopter, it was in the one I'll show you a picture here, but it scared me to death and here's why. We go on all kinds of call outs. This particular call out, it was in the winter. Someone had gone fishing, it was just before the ice froze over. The edges were crusted out, ice was thick and starting to form but the middle was open and a wife called. 
and her husband hadn't returned, had gone fishing alone on a nearby lake and never came back. First thing we do is we wonder if there's something else going on, marital problems, whatever it is, and it wasn't. We do a little bit of research real fast, call around. We found his vehicle hooked to a trailer with no boat at the marina. So now we know, hey, this is real. It's getting dark, it's getting cold. He's by himself. So this is a real call out. So we go on the call out and we start searching, it's still daylight, it starts to go dark. Snow flurries start to come in. Now the guy's been gone since earlier that day and we're moving into a really, really cold night. And we're searching for the boat. And the boat ended up turning up, but no one in it. A drift on the side of the lake. And now we're really worried because the likelihood is he probably fell in. And we know that we're approaching, if he had fallen in the water earlier in the day, the chances are he may likely not have made it. But we never want to give up and we push all the way through until whatever it is that causes us to have to shut down for safety reasons and go home. Well, this particular time, uh, the night got so late, the waves started to pick up. It was getting rough, forecast to get worse. The bolts all came off the lake that were doing the search. We're still going in the helicopter. Everyone's pulling off and we decided let's put one more load of fuel in and run late, see if we can get one more shot because our, basically if we didn't find them that night, the likelihood of survivability in the water was certainly he wasn't gonna make it outside of the water out of reach of some help. After being dunked in the water, likelihood is he would not make it probably likely he's already gone. So we went out and we went for one last run and just randomly we passed across this island. It's uh, we call it Bird Island. It's a place sometimes we'd go land our, our bush planes on when the water gets really low, it had a long spit and we'd water ski our planes up and landed on this little spit. But in the winter as the water comes up, the, we call it Bird Island and it's just white, whether it's snow or bird crap, <laughs> it's one or the other. And it's just a little mound. And we're flying over it, and as we go by, we thought, well, I don't remember that pile of rocks right there, because it's usually small cobble. And uh, so, well, let's go back and take another look. We fly over, and there's a snow flurry covering the island, and we don't see anything but white snow, white ground, and this bump that looked abnormally large. And we thought, oh my gosh, that bump's not right. I don't think it's anything. Let's go take another closer look. We got down and we hovered on it and we couldn't tell from just a hover. So I actually set the helicopter down in the water. Um, there wasn't enough room for me to land. I mean, this is, when I say island, it's now just a bump sneaking out of the water. And there's not, not a boat there, but um, we land and we stick the skids in the water. Almost took the belly to the, to the water. The skis are down in the rocks. And we send out my friend Dave, who's with me, to go take a look and he goes over there and sure enough, it's a frozen solid individual and he, we think he's hadn't made it. Next thing you know, the guy opens his eyes and then, then it scared us to death. Are you gonna be, are you gonna be salty like that? <laughs> <laughs> because you walk up and you hit somebody who's been dunked in water, their clothes is like solid rock, it is, literally an ice cube covered in a snow blowover and all of a sudden the eyes open up. So um, it was kind of a mad panic rush at that point. I quickly got on the radio, we called to the shore. Um, they had already pulled the rescue boats out of the water but the trailers were still right there. They backed them right back in, raced out, brought out blankets, revival gear, got them on and uh, fortunately made a full recovery. But um, they, we had all kinds of call outs like that and uh, that one I'll never forget when you're expecting someone to be gone and then they look at you it's enough to make your insides kind of wig out but it's the most rewarding thing to be able to take someone and bring them home to their family I hope that the rest of my life I'll have the ability to to continue doing search and rescue um, whether it's in the helicopter or our planes we use this one what we wanted to do different with this to kind of help it be a better rescue chopper than the helicopters I've, we've had in our past is we went and specifically looked for a, six, a 
a older model Bell 206. The really early ones hadn't been adapted for military component add-ons, guns and other items. And so really early ones were extremely lightweight. We live in high and hot area elevations and we wanted to help find a helicopter that was affordable, used and lightweight with a good overhauled engine, fresh paint and interior. And so this is what we found. This helicopter only weighs almost uh, nearly a flat 1800 pounds and we're pulling more weight out of it. New lightweight LED lights on it. Um, Watt sent us out some, so thank you Watt for doing that. We'll get those installed. Uh, I'll give you a quick tour inside. Um, the avionics is a little bit uh, older right here, but uh, we can fix that. I think what we need at this point is a new Garmin panel for it. So I'm gonna reach out to Garmin and see what they might have for us so we can upgrade the avionics, make it a little more conducive to search and rescue, maybe put some night vision on it. Uh, in the back, got more room in the back, got three seats in the back two up front and a good amount of cargo space. Um, this does have one area that's a little bit lacking um, uh, and that's the tail rotor. This helicopter has uh, options of different motors. This one has been upgraded to a much bigger motor. So this helps us out with the high altitude. The tail rotor is a bit small. When the air gets really thin, you get some gusty winds on the tops of the pinnacle points that we end up searching a lot for. We go there a lot, it's high, it's hot, it's windy, and that tail rotor is gonna struggle a little up there. So we're gonna redo that. We got the motor for it. So I'm gonna put a new tail rotor on it, make sure that when we get up there, we don't run out of our left pedal. Um, just even during the training, I found on some of the ridge points, landing on in the wind up on some snow crests and dropping it in the snow. A couple times, I'm really all clear on that left side of that pedal. So uh, we're gonna make that upgrade, panel upgrade, lighting upgrade, and uh, I think we'll probably put the sheriff um, search and rescue tag right here um, haven't decided for sure, but anyway, this is why we haven't got a lot done on Scrappy lately. And um, if there's anything that can pull me away from building an airplane, it's getting something for search and rescue, trying to make sure that I'm staying proficient, I'm flying a lot. Um, I've got a lot of helicopter time. We actually, my brother and I and friend, uh, partner in a helicopter, we bought a helicopter brand new. We timed it out completely in R44 from, from zero all the way to have to be completely torn down. So uh, it took us about 10 years to get there. But um, anyway, this is my newest bird. I'm super excited about it. I hope you guys enjoy that, that little side distraction story about search and rescue. Some of you have asked me, I have done countless rescue call outs, um, some great outcomes, some not as great outcomes, but either way, our goal is always to return a loved one home to their family, no matter how that is. And so that's what this helicopter's for. So I hope it has a lot of good life in her to help us out for the next years to come. Thank you for following along. I appreciate it. If you want to see some more search and rescue call outs or some of the call outs we do on this, if that interests you, um, aside from building aircraft, uh, the planes I like to build and race and compete, let me know and maybe I can add some more search and rescue call outs that we do in the future. Uh, I'm going to turn it in right here. Thanks for following along. You guys know the drill. I'm going to get back to work. <laughs>